Welcome guys to today's class. In today's video, we want to discuss another experiment very important in physics. And that is determination of focal length and nature of images formed by convex lens. You know, we have convex lens, which we call convergent lens. And we have concave lens, which we call divergent lens. So this video or this experiment will focus on determination of focal length and nature of images formed by what? Convex lens. It has the objective, as shown on the board, to determine the nature of image formed by converging lens and focal length of that converging lens. Look at the apparatus setup. This is the object. This is the ray bus. The object is taken to be a broom. A broom. Yes, a broomstick. This is the lens holder. This is the lens itself. This is the image. And this is the screen. This is the table stand where the whole thing is being set up. And this is the meter room. Now, look at the procedure. The procedure goes this way. Place the lens on the lens holder and use it to project an image of the window or a light source as far as 10 meters or more from the lens on the screen by adjusting the screen until a sharp image of the object is obtained. Measure and record the distance VO of the screen from the lens. That is one. Once we get that VO, we note it. Place an object, say a broomstick, over the hole of the ray bus and set up the ray bus lens and screen as shown in diagram above. Adjust the height of the lens object and screen so that their heights are the same. Place the screen at a distance of 110cm from the object. Place the lens on holder very close to the screen and move the lens away from the screen until a sharp a sharp image of the object is observed on the screen. Record the distance of the object from the lens as U and the distance of the image from the lens as V. With the screen and object at the same position in 3. With the screen and object at the same position in this II. II. Move the lens closer to the object until a sharp image is formed on the screen. Again, record U and V. Repeat 2 and 3 for D equals to 100 cm, 90 cm, 80 cm, 70 cm, 60 cm. Tablate your results. Now, the essence of the first procedure is for us to get our VO, which will be called the focal length of that word, convex lens. That is the essence. Now, because this convex lens has a range, the focal length of a convex lens has a range, we will not waste our time doing it because we are trying to perform it without touching apparatus. So what we do is I will say the range of focal length is equal to 13 to what? 15 watts. The, um, the focal length of a convex lens ranging between 13 to 15 cm. Now, what we do is I will pick a value here as what we'll be using. I pick 40 cm. Then, what I will remember is that the set G is 100 and what 10 cm and the d dimension here simply mean d equals to the distance of the object plus the distance of the image that is what they say it is 100 cm so, uh, 110 cm 
And so we say 1, 1, 10 is equal to U, D plus what? V, D. We can make U the subject of formula. We say, therefore, U, D equal to 1, 1, 10 minus V, D. Okay? And you still remember that our last formula is 1 over this plus 1 over what? V. Okay? Where U is 1, 1, 10 minus V, D. We say 1 over F equals 1 over 1, 1, 10 minus V, D. Where the 1, 1, 10 is your D. So let's still put it as our D. But we should know that in this case, 1, 1, 10 is your D. 100, D. 90 as this stay in the procedure. Then plus what? 1 over what? V. Looking for LCM, LCM, you will be having that 1 over F is equal to D minus V, D and V, D. This divide this will give me V, D plus this divide this will give me D minus V, D. And so this will cancel this, leaving you with D only. Right? So this times this will be what? V, D. D, V, D. This V, D means image distance. Are you getting it? Image distance. So we have to make it to be very tiny. Okay? This times is minus V D squared. Then this is D equals to 1 over what? F. So when I say cross multiply, this times is will be what? F D equals to F D equals to D V D minus V D squared. And so, what we'll be having is, we will now say, take this to this side, we have V D squared. Take this to this, we have D V D. Then take this, this is here. This will remain here plus F D equals to zero. So we'll be using this formula to do our work solving. Solving this using quadratic equation. Resolving this using quadratic equation, we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. This is one. That means our a equal to what? One. Our B, our B equals to minus D, minus D. Our A equal to 1, our B equal to minus D, and our C equals to FD. You can see A1, B minus D, C, F, D. We have gotten what we are to use to solve. We are trying to make v subject of formula v d because this is like x square x so we are trying to make v subject of what formula so Resolving V D squared minus D V D plus F D equal to zero using quadratic formula. We will be saying that where A is one, B equal to minus D and C equal to F D. We'll be having that V D equals to V D equals to 
minus bracket minus D plus or minus square root of what? B square minus what? B square is what? Minus D squared. Minus 4 times 1 times what? C. FD. All over 2 times 1, 2. So we have it to be VD equals to D plus or minus square root of D square minus 4 FD all over what 2. So we'll be using this formula to get the value of what VD. Okay, so we'll be using the one of minus. You know that the possible value for D is D plus this all over 2 or D minus this all over 2. That doesn't mean you can't use plus. If you use plus, whatever it gives you, you minus it from 1, 1, 10 to get your what? U, D. But if you are using minus, whatever it gives you too, you minus it from 1, 1, 10 to get your what? V, D. Uh, um, to get your U, D as well. Since we said that u plus v is equal to d, is equal to d, which could be 110, 100, 90, 80, and all have you. Okay? So, I am putting now 110 minus square root of 110, all what? Square minus 4 times f. I'm taking my f to be 14 times the 110 all over what 2 I will use my calculator to sort it out I will say 110 minus bracket square root bracket one. 1, 0 squared four times fourteen times one one zero divided by two that should be giving me sixteen point five. I will say 16.5 cm. I'll make it to be in one decimal place. Are you getting it? I'll make it to be in one decimal place. I'll make it to be in one decimal place. The reason be that if I make it to be in one decimal place, the centimeter rule we use as a measuring instrument, the reading accuracy is like 0 0.1 cm that the minimum we can get from it is 0 0.1 that if you get to 0 get to 1 if you get to what 0 get to 1 get to 2 here 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 that means you can get only 0 0.1 cm as the reading accuracy of it so this is like 16.5 so if you say 16.51, 52, 53, you can't get it with your what? Rural. I guess you can get it 16.55. That is in between 16 and 17. Are you getting it? So that is how it goes. Remember, we said first thing, compute the inside own. And that's why I say square root of bracket.
Okay, we have gotten the values of V, as we have seen on the table. We notice that U plus V is equal to D. As they said, the object distance plus the image distance will give you D. Therefore, we say that U will be equal to D minus V. So we have to subtract all our D. The first D is 110.00. 100.00, 1, 19.00, 30 .00, 30.00, and 70.00. Okay? So our U will now be equal to we say this minus this 110 minus 16.5, 93.5. You have here to be 93.50, 100 minus 16.8, this is 83.20, 90 minus 17.3, this is 70. 2.70 then 80 minus 18.1 this is 61.90 then 70 minus 19.40 this is 50. Point is zero. We have seen the actual number is in one decimal place because of the meter rule we are using. Centimeter rule is in 0 0.1 cm. That is the release value you can get from it. And so we are just attaching the other zero to beautify the values. Now we get the inverse of u. <laughs> inverse of u is 93. 3.5 inverse equals to, we'll be putting it in three decimal place, it will be 0 0.011. It's 3.2 inverse 0 0.012. 72.7 inverse 0 0.014 61.9 inverse 0 0.016 50.6 inverse 0. 0, 2, 0. Then inverse of V, 16.5 inverse, 0 0.061, 16.8 inverse, 0 0.060. 17.3 inverse 0 0.58 18.1 inverse 0 0.055 and 19.4 inverse 0.052. So we have gotten our table of values for the experiment. Yes. We want to go into the what? Graph plotting. So that we'll see how we can plot this graph. See other questions that will follow it. Are you getting it? That is what we want to go into now. How to do our graph. See other questions that they want us to do and see how to what sort those questions.
out. Okay, after getting a table of values, we want to embark on graph. How to plot the graph and answer the questions that follows it. It's important for you to note that when you come to mirror formula, 1 over f equals to 1 over u plus 1 over v. This is lens formula. When you come to lens formula, I mean to say, okay, when you make 1 over v subject to formula, this you go here, you have 1 over f equals to, okay, minus 1 over u equals to 1 over v. This can be written as what? 1 over what v equals to 1 over f minus 1 over what u. Or, or you can write it as minus 1 over u plus 1 over what f. That means when you plot the graph of y against what x, m becomes your what? Your slope. This is your slope. Your slope is minus 1. Graph of 1 over v against 1 over u gives you slope. Theoretically, to be minus 1. This is what we call theoretical slope. Theoretical slope. But what we get in the graph will be called graphical slope. Then the intercept. Intercept is what we call 1 over f, theoretically. 1 over f is called the intercept, okay?